Dark Knight Films Reviews. I'm your host, Matt Spies, and today I will be doing a special Halloween-themed ranking video of The Monsters. Now, this ranking will be of monsters, either pilot episodes of shows that never happened, pilots of something that just was a one-time thing, or a TV movie, or theatrical movie, whatever. And full-fledged TV shows, if that happened. So, this will be a pretty extensive list of throughout many years. So, what do you guys think? What was your favorite instance of The Monsters? Please comment down below. And if you're enjoying these videos and enjoying what I'm doing with these things, these ranking videos, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because it really does help my channel out a lot. All right, so let's get to the list. Starting with number 10. Mockingbird Lane, 2012. This was a pilot episode for a proposed television series, which was to star Jerry O'Connell as Herman Munster, Portia de Rosa as Lily Munster, and Eddie Izzard as... Grandpa Monster. This thing is basically what Riverdale was to the Archie comics and cartoons. Basically trying to turn it into a serious show. Similar to what we just had recently with the dramatic retelling of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air with Bel-Air. And a lot like those, this does not work. This is horrible. For, uh, for the main reason is they don't look anything like the characters. They didn't even try to make them look like any of the characters. I mean, Jerry O'Connell looks like Jerry O'Connell. He doesn't look like Herman Munster. Um, and none of the other characters do either. I mean, the, the, they, this is, this looks more like a, them trying to make a, a dramatic version of the Adams family instead of the monsters. This looks nothing like the monsters. So this goes at the bottom of the barrel for me. It is, it is a horrible, uh, retelling of the monsters. Thankfully. It never became a series. Good taste prevailed. Now, moving on to number nine. The Monsters 2022. When it was announced that Rob Zombie was going to direct a Monsters movie, Knowing that he's a already saying that he is a huge Munsters fan, I thought, yeah, I'll give him a chance. You know, as long as he doesn't try to make it, you know, like Mockingbird Lane and try to make it some serious thing and try to put all the profanity in it that he puts in all of his other movies because the Munsters isn't about that. And then it was announced it was going to be PG and, and it was. You know, so I was like, okay, cool. But he wrote it as well. And there's one bad thing I can say about Rob Zombie. He can't write for shit. Um, Rob Zombie can direct the hell out of a movie. I would love to see Rob Zombie take somebody else's script of a really good story and direct it. It'd probably be really good. And if he had let someone else write 
the monsters. Similar to the way um, the writers did on the Adams Family and the Adams Family Values, which did really well. Those those movies were really good, and they respected the the characters from the show. But in my opinion, those those movies surpassed the original TV show. But then again, I was never as big a fan of the Adams Family as I was the Monsters. So what went wrong with this one? Well. Not only is it bad writing, but he cast Jeff Daniel Phillips as Herman Munster, which, I mean, looking at him in Three from Hell, when he played the warden, he doesn't talk with a, you know, high-pitched voice or anything. He, I was thinking, maybe he'll be good, you know, uh, that, might, that might work. But no. For whatever reason, whether it was Rob Zombie telling him to do this or whether it was Jeff Daniel Phillips' idea to do this stupid voice, this high pitch voice of the character. Greetings from Transylvania! <laughs> it does not work. Herman Munster does not talk with a high pitch voice. So that the only thing Jeff Daniel Phillips gets right in this film is the laugh. <laughs> and then we have Sherry Moon Zombie as Lily Munster. And Sherry Moon Zombie seems like she's trying to <laughs> do an impersonation of someone doing an impersonation of Lily Munster. It is not good at all. Um, and I had no nothing against Sherry being in the House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, Three from Hell, even her role in Halloween. Halloween 2, that's a different story, but um, I thought she did okay in those roles. This, I don't think the woman has any comic flair at all. And it's apparent that she knew nothing about how that character is to be portrayed. The only actor in this that seemed out of the main three that seemed to know what they were doing with the character and what that character was supposed to be about was Daniel Roebuck as Grandpa Munster in this one called The Count. I mean, his portrayal is pretty spot on to Al Lewis. The problem is Rob Zombie wrote him in a way that does not feel like the real Grandpa at all. Grandpa didn't have a problem with Herman. Grandpa didn't hate Herman. It seems Miss Lily is truly in love. Oh, come on. You know and I know that we got to get rid of that bozo Herman Munster. And not want him to be with his daughter. I mean, this was just stupid. So, this was bad. Not as bad as Mockingbird Lane, but this was bad. And that's why it's in this spot on the list. Coming in at number eight, we have The Munster's Scary Little Christmas from 1996. This film stars Sam McMurray as Herman Munster and Magnuson as... Lily Munster, and Sandy Barron as Grandpa Munster. You are looking at Eastern Europe's preeminent alchemist. I could make it snow in your pants if I want. Well, I'd rather you didn't if it's all the same to you. Yeah. 
They got the look of Herman down pretty good in this one. That's about the only good thing I can say about it. I don't know who Ann Magnuson is. I mean, I've never heard of her in anything else. And she wasn't a worth a shit. Lily Munster. And neither was Sam as, as uh, Herman. I mean, his his... His voice is just off. I don't know why they didn't just carry over with the same people that were in the previous film before this, which I will get to that one later. But yeah, um, the plot, the writing on this thing is just... It involves a stupid Santa Claus that doesn't even feel like Santa Claus and... Two elves that are the bad people trying to sabotage the monsters trying to get Santa back to the North Pole after they inadvertently bring Santa to Mockingbird Lane. That's the plot. And it is horrible. I mean, the, the plot line here is just ridiculously stupid and the acting in it is just this is not how you do it people a bad monsters movie okay now we move on to number seven the monsters today which aired from 19 88 to 1991. This was an actual TV series and it lasted a couple of years. I remember watching this back in the day and, uh, I, you know, my kid self thought it was really good. Looking at it with adult eyes, <laughs> it is not as good. You have a fairly good look of Herman in this with John Shuck playing him. But John Shuck's voice just does not work for this character. <laughs> Imagine that. What, dear? It's a Ronald Reagan movie. Oh, wonderful. He's such a good actor. Yeah, but they cast him as president. Who's going to believe that? Wait. You have an amazing Lily, though, in this. With uh, Lee Merriweather. Um, so, yeah, you have Catwoman herself was playing Lily Munster in this show. We have just taken a 22-year nap. 22 years. Oh. Which, I mean, if if you would have had a really good Herman in this, this this thing, and a really good uh, grandpa, because the grandpa, oh, he was horrible. I haven't been this happy since the San Francisco earthquake. Um, but the, eh, what can I say? It wasn't as bad as. Others that were on this list, like the previous three, but uh, for a revival of this classic show that lasted several years, you would hope that it would be better than this. And it's a shame, because like I said, Lee Merriweather was great as Lily. It sucks that the rest of the show around her was not that great. And coming in at number six, we have the pilot, The Munsters. My Fair Munster from 1964. This was a color pilot episode that they did. Fred Gwynn, Al Lewis, Beverly Owens were in this. But all the rest of the cast members were different. They had Joan Marshall and Happy Derman playing Phoebe, which is Lily in this pilot, and Happy Derman was playing Eddie. It is 
kind of rough. Um, Fred Gwynn, his performance is great, as usual. As is Al Lewis. Their makeup isn't as good as the final show, though. In this pilot, uh, Herman has a weird forehead uh, makeup that just is off. It is unproportioned to his head in the right way, and it just looks really weird. Otherwise, Herman's pretty good, um, except for the fact that he has no padding. He is basically just wearing the suit on his normal body. Um, he's not as padded down to look as big as he is in the final series. Al Lewis, his makeup, tried to make his nose a lot longer. So he looks a little off because of that. Otherwise, he's, he looks pretty close. Um, Joan Marshall's Phoebe, the Lily equivalent in here. Um, Joan Marshall's an attractive woman, but her look of this character, the, the way they designed this character to look this character, she looks more like Morticia Adams from the Adams Family than she does Lily Munster. Um, and her attitude and acting is just not near as good as what Lily eventually is, as played by the great Yvonne DiCarlo. Then we come to Happy Derman as Eddie. I don't know what they were thinking. They make this kid a total brat. He's hissing, he's growling, he's on all fours, and he is just acting like a complete shit. Oh, oh, you can't make me! Don't talk first to your mother, and stop playing with that noose. Leave me alone! Don't touch me! Leave me alone! doesn't work. Thankfully, they fixed that um, when they did the next pilot um, in which they replaced this happy Derman kid with Butch Patrick in the role. And Butch Patrick was much better in that in there, of course. Um, and then, of course, we had Yvonne DiCarlo actually playing Lily in that pilot. So yeah, this was not a very good start. So thankfully they, uh, they did do another uh, pilot and uh, fixed the, the problems that they had with it. But it was cool that it was in color. Because um, the, the pilot they did following that was in black and white unfortunately. All right, coming down to the top five. We have at number five, we have The Mini Monsters from 1973. <laughs> I heard about this one, and uh, the only returning cast member from the uh, TV show cast was Al Lewis, his grandpa, in this animated uh, film. Who plays Herman? Really had me perplexed, and I was like, well, how is this going to work? Because Herman was voiced by none other than Richard Long, who played Jared in The Big Valley. And you would never suspect that that guy would be a good Herman, but you would be wrong. His voice is as close as anybody that I have ever heard come to Fred Gwynn, besides one, one other person who I will get to later on this list. 
Grandpa's experiment is coming along rather nicely tonight, Lily. When Grandpa's happy, it seems to give the whole house a lift. That I know who could do that. You mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hit the silk hunch, my <laughs> But, I mean, it, I, I'm a, I would would have loved to have seen what Richard Long would have looked like playing a live action version of him because he does the voice so good on this animation. Of course, um, Al Lewis is always great as Grandpa wasn't a big fan of Lily and Eddie on the on this cartoon thing, but uh, it, it is it is pretty cool though to see them in animation. Um, they did a weird thing with the way they did Herman. Everybody else looks pretty close to the, the way they did in the show, but for whatever reason. They made Herman's hair white. I don't understand that one. Um, so, what are you going to do? Um, now, coming in at number four, we have Munster Go Home from 1966. This was a color feature film that followed the series with all of the same cast, except for Marilyn. Marilyn was the only uh, actress that they did not bring back from the original series. But of course, Marilyn has always been played by different actresses. We had um, Beverly Owen, and then we had Pat Priest, you know. So that's not a big deal for this. As long as you got Yvonne DiCarlo, Fred Gwynn... <laughs> And uh, Al Lewis, and of course, Butch Patrick as Eddie. I, I didn't mind the change in Lily for this. This film is really fun because uh, the, the monsters are a little bit out of their element in a way, but in a way they actually still make it work because they end up going to England because uh, Herman is supposed to be inheriting this castle in England. And of course the people that actually live in England that are considered the Munster part of the family are threatened by him doing this and they want to take it away from him. They don't think that he deserves the inheritance and they're trying to do everything they can to get Herman and family out of there. This is the secret of Munster Hall. Call the police. Right. Get the FBI. We'll do. Call Scotland Yard. Right now. Phone Batman. I got it. The car 54, where are you? But it doesn't work because they're trying to scare them and they're just, they're finding it funny and thinking, hey, they're making us feel all at home. <laughs> But I thought the movie was really cool. It has a really cool finale with the uh, big race that happens where they're trying to sabotage Herman, the whole race. And <laughs> Herman has no idea that he is, that they're trying to kill him throughout this race. And uh, it, is, is, it is hilarious. Um, but this movie was really a good, and it was great seeing them in color other than that uh pilot this was basically most of the real cast you know full color thing and it, and it was great to see them in this now coming in at number three we are down to our last three coming in at number three is the monster's revenge from 1981 this film brought back Fred Gwynn, Al Lewis, Yvonne DiCarlo. 
and they had to recast um, the two kids because <laughs> if they did try to bring back Pat Priest or any of the other actresses that played her in the past, she would be an older woman. And uh, these characters apparently don't age, so we don't want that. Uh, so they had uh, Casey Martell playing Eddie, and they have Joe McDonald as Marilyn. And out of those two, I think Joe did an excellent job as Marilyn. She was... She was the right, she, she really did feel almost like a Pat Priest or Beverly Owen um, in the role. Your plates are mine, handsome. <laughs> uh, no thanks, I'm with you. Marilyn, what are you doing here? It's liable to get rough. Well, you didn't seem to mind when it came to rescuing me. Yeah, I almost lost both of our lives doing it. That's what I mean. You could use a little looking after. I, I really liked her portrayal of the character. She did really good in here. So I have no issues with her. Casey is Eddie. He's, he's, he's okay. He's not bad, but he's, you know, he's just, you know, he's okay. But it is great getting Fred Gwynn back as Herman and, and, uh, and Al Lewis back as Grandpa and Yvonne DiCarlo back to play, um, Lily, one last time. Um, this film, because of that, it's it's kind of bittersweet because it's the last time we get to see them playing the characters and everything. But they uh, they didn't miss a beat. I mean, it's been all that all those years. I mean, you know, uh, it's like almost uh, twenty years difference almost between um, the series. Not not quite twenty, but almost. Um, and they they still look really good in the roles at this point. Uh, it was it was really good. Uh, the plot with this wax museum that where they're using these robots and some of them based on the monsters themselves, which is a little weird. But I I liked how they were trying to pr prove their innocence, Grandpa and. Um, and Hermit were trying to prove their innocence throughout the story, and, you know, these cops were not buying it at all. Um, but yeah, it, it, and you have uh, the uh, legendary Sid Caesar playing uh, the main villain of this, and he is he is hilarious as the villain in this. He's... he's he, <laughs> He's got the right where he's planning, doing the planning and everything. He sounds sinister and everything. But his, his, you can tell he's just having fun with it and being goofy, too, at the same time. So, uh, this was, this was a, this was just a fun, um, film and a great reunion for the characters. And I really think out of the, out of the color, uh, films with the original cast in there, this one is uh, slightly better for me than Munster Go Home because it does have them more at uh, Mockingbird Lane and everything. They're, they're at home throughout it. You know, uh, Munster Go Home had them away in England and doing all this stuff. Um, but this one stayed more close to home and it was really fun. And like I said, uh, uh, jo uh, Joe was great as Marilyn in here. She is actually gets the best. I think her Marilyn gets the most to do that any of the Marilyns have had at this point. And she was great. I loved her in this role. That's why this movie makes the number three on my list. All right, coming in at number two, we have Here Come the Monsters from 1995. <laughs> this one I mean, if you, if you were going to make, this is what the Munsters, Rob Zombie's Munsters should have been. This stars Edward Herman as Herman Munster, and he is amazing in his portrayal of the character. 
he feels almost like Fred Gwynn. I mean, he, he is as good at doing this as what uh, Richard Long was at voicing the character, like I said, for the mini monsters. Um, he is amazing throughout this film. I, I really loved his performance. It seems you're just not suited to working with the public. According to your aptitude test, you're best suited for terrorizing villagers. Do you get much call for that? No. The Internal Revenue Service pretty well has that covered. His, his whole, everything he does through this feels like he knows the character. He knows how to do Herman right. And uh, I, just, I just loved his, his performance here in this. And then you have Veronica Hamill, <laughs> best known as Joyce Davenport in Hill Street Blues. And I, you would have never thought that she could play as good a Lily Munster as she plays, but she does a really good job of living up to Yvonne DiCarlo. And they actually almost look similar. You would have never thought that. <laughs> I see you have a son, too. <laughs> Is he a little monster like my Charlie? <laughs> Absolutely. You know they must get together and chase cars. Then you have... Um, Robert Morris as Grandpa. Now, he does not look as much like Al Lewis, but he does a really good job of getting the intensity and getting that energy that Al Lewis always brought to the character of Grandpa. Herman! I'm going up the first class. They got a better movie and it's in color. Oh, Grandpa's having a nice flight. <laughs> he does a really good job in this. Uh, Eddie is played by some kid named Matthew Batucius. And he's, he, he's, he's better than the kid in The Monster's Revenge. And he is given a lot more to do. And he does look a lot more like Butch Patrick, but uh, he, he's yeah, he's good. He's good, but uh, just, you know, what a name to be s stuck with, kid. And then we have Christine Taylor as Marilyn. Grandpa, was she in an accident or something? Oh, sh 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 it's just a cruel <laughs> trick of genetics, Eddie. Her father was always conducting experiments to make her look more like us, but oh, he failed miserably. She, oh wow, um, she does a really good job in this, and yes, she's not given as much as Joe McDonald was in um, The Monster's Revenge, but she is given a little bit more um, plot in this. This is basically the, if you wanted to do like Rob Zombie did and give an origin story for the monsters. This is a lot better done than what that was. Um, so, <sighs> the only things that this one kind of does that, that would be a detriment to it um, is they do change Marilyn to where she's not Lily's niece. She's now Herman's niece. And her father is uh, Mr. Hyde. And he's been experimenting and he's all of a sudden uh, become uh, Jekyll, who is now a good-looking politician running for office. So he's left the family behind. He's being manipulated by this sleazy um, publicist, I guess. Um, and he's trying to get him into office because then he can control what, he's, what he says and what he does. So he, he can't get into office himself, so he's using this guy because this guy has no past. Because before this, he was Mr. Hyde, and nobody knows that he's Mr. Hyde. So, um, the monsters figure it out and they decide 
you know, they're going to have to save uh, Marilyn's father um, and getting back to himself in order to save um, his wife, who is in a coma now because of her longing for her lost love. <laughs> but it is just a fun uh, film, and, and, the, and the characters are really played true to the original series in a way that it it literally could be a uh, really good uh, prequel to the original series. Like I said, the only the only difference between this and the original series was, like I said, with Marilyn and the small thing where Grandpa's lab was under the floor at one point, and now it's below the steps where Spot is at. So, just a slight change is all there. It's not. It's nothing major like Rob Zombie's crap was. So this is great. I love this. You should definitely watch this if you love the monsters. It is definitely worth a look. So. Coming in at number one, you know what this is, The Monsters, from 1964 to 1966. This show was my favorite. Um, one of my favorite shows growing up. I, I hated that it didn't um, last longer. Um, and it's sad because there is an episode from the original first season of The Monsters called uh, Family Portrait, which is was done in color. And man, if they had done like the second season and if they would have just done it in color, um, I think they would have gotten a lot better ratings and they would have been able to compete easily with Batman which uh, was out doing it in, in the ratings. Because if you look at all the other shows that started off in black and white, um, like uh, Bewitched, I Dream of Jeannie, th they ended up going from black and white shows from the start, and then they went into color. And the transition was beautiful, and people loved seeing those characters in vibrant color. And that would have been the same way with the monsters if they would have done this like the family portrait episode is, because that episode is so good. It looks so good in color with uh, the way uh, Herman is colored and all the other characters are and everything. It, it just looks so good. Um, and that episode was so great just because, you know, it had uh, a very young Harvey Corman in it. He was excellent in that episode to begin with. So, but seeing it in color, it just gave it that new, a new feel to it, to where it just, like, it's the, one of the best um, Munsters things ever. If they had done the whole series that way, we would have gotten, I think we would have, easily gotten the monsters from 64 to into, you know, 75, 76, maybe even 78, um, because it would have been that popular. Uh, sad that it didn't happen. But yeah, this original series, I mean, the, everybody was, you know, firing on all cylinders. Fred Gwynn was excellent as Herman, of course. Uh, to really get distance, you lean back like this and really let her go. <laughs> uh, 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 that was just one of my short ones. Reel it in, Pop. See if you get anything. All right, Eddie. I do believe I have something. Boy, that's the neatest looking fish I ever saw. And, and, and it seems to be cooked. I guess they have a lot of hot springs around here. 
And then you have, you know, Hal Lewis as, as Grandpa was brilliant in there. And then you have the lovely and beautiful Yvonne DiCarlo as Lily and her deadpan delivery of her lines that are hilarious. But she doesn't say it like she's trying to be funny. She does it so perfect. And that's what most of the other actors playing um, the Lily role don't understand. They don't get it. Yvonne DiCarlo nailed it. The only person that nailed it as good as her was Veronica Hamill. So, what do you think of my list? Do you agree with my list? Please comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your list is. What were your favorite monsters, films, and TV shows out of this collection of these 10 instances of the monsters? And again, if you like these videos, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And it is still in the midst of October, so expect even more horror-related, Halloween-related content to come. We'll catch you guys next time.